Hey, this video is going to present a solution to question 2 in your constant acceleration packet. It's on page 12. This question really stretches your thinking and it's going to encourage you to apply definitions. Therefore, I encourage you while watching this video to hit pause as soon as I give you enough of a hint to go on. I'm going to focus on the parts of the question further down the page. This uh, first one is find the displacement from 2 to 8 seconds. Here is my advice for things to write down while solving a problem. The displacement is defined as, let's see, this is part, one moment, part C of the question. Part C says find the displacement. Displacement is change in position, aka delta x. Let me write that larger so that it's easy to see on the video. Remind yourself of the basic definition of the thing being asked for. So now I'm going to go from 2 to 8 seconds, figure out the two positions of the object, find the difference between them. At 2 seconds, 2 seconds, the object is here. The object's position there is 24 meters. That's the initial position. At 8 seconds, the object's position is 9 meters. The difference between those two numbers in that order is the displacement. Please note that the displacement of this object is negative. You can see that because on this graph the object is moving from a large positive number towards zero. Okay, part D says find the average velocity. Again, I'm encouraging you to show your process because I think it will help you solve the problem. This is not busy work. Average velocity is defined as such. Now, when written down like that, immediately underneath part C, it becomes really obvious why I had you find the displacement. So the answer that we get up there, it turns out it's negative 15 meters. divided by the time interval between 2 and 8 seconds. 2 to 8 seconds, that is a positive 6 seconds. 15 over 6, and let me just open up a calculator on my computer. 15 over 6, the decimal version of that is 2 and a half. But you can recognize by looking at this graph, clearly this object is changing velocity. The velocity graph, I'm sorry, the position graph does not have a constant slope. This object is definitely changing velocity, so that average um, represents that whole time interval from 2 to 8 seconds. Let's continue on. Part E says find the instantaneous velocity at 2 seconds and again at 8 seconds. Find the instantaneous velocity. Now there's a hint in the question. It says by using the slopes of tangent lines. This is where you need to call back on something you learned earlier. What is a tangent line? Pause the video right now. Go back and look in your packet and figure out what a tangent line is. Then I'll restart my explanation. No, really. Go back and look for that. Okay, tangent line. Okay, that line is approximately tangent to the curve at 2 seconds. The slope of that line will represent the velocity of this object. The 8 second mark is here. The slope of that line will be the instantaneous velocity at those two moments. Yes, I just eyeballed those lines on there. I put them on as accurately as I could do. And I get that different people are going to have different answers in a place where there is an exact answer, and it is knowable. This is designed to be eyeballed. It's designed to be approximated in this problem. So go find the slopes of those two tangent lines. I don't actually know what they are at this point. Uh, that is part E of the question. I'm going to make a note of that on here.
find slopes of the two red lines uh, on the graph here at this point. So now part F, determine the average acceleration. Okay, average acceleration. Now we haven't heard the term average acceleration yet. We've been talking about average velocity a lot. I just want to remind you, average acceleration in a unit that is called constant acceleration motion implies that average and constant, the acceleration equals average acceleration. This is the definition of acceleration. It's the rate of change of the velocity of an object. Do you know the velocity here in eight seconds? I hope so, because that would have meant that you actually did part eight. And do you know the velocity of the object back here at two seconds? Excellent. You know the change in velocity then, or you have the information again. And you know the amount of time that elapsed between two and eight seconds. Outstanding. So I leave that to you to actually do the arithmetic. I don't have a calculator here in front of me other than one on my computer. All right, and then there's one last question. instantaneous velocity at five seconds. So um, this is where I'm going to call on you to use some knowledge about instantaneous velocity. A while back we learned um, that if you find an average velocity over some time interval that is the same as the instantaneous velocity at the center of that interval. I'm going to use that fact here. In order to know the velocity at five seconds I can find the average velocity for a time interval that surrounds that and puts five in its center. So five, five, sorry, five seconds is at the center between four and six, three and seven, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to erase this from the previous question. And I'm going to say, with my ruler, connect the line uh, I'll go ahead and do four to six seconds. Four to six. Okay, so uh, the straight red line on the board here, hang on. Boop. See, it's close to the curve just because of the scale of this graph. The slope of that line will be average velocity between four and six seconds. It will also be the velocity at the five second instant. I need to find the displacement and divide it by the time interval. Um, so the time interval is easy, that's a two second time interval. And then the displacement, let's see, at four seconds, 21 meters. At six seconds, 16, so 16 meters minus 21 meters. Uh, what's that? Five meters, negative five meters over two seconds. Two goes into five, negative two and a half times. At five seconds, the, objects have, the object has an instantaneous velocity of negative two and a half meters per second. Now, I recognize that I've seen that number before. It was actually when I found this answer here, between two seconds and eight seconds. I forgot to take advantage of the fact that five seconds is also in the middle between two and eight. Uh, so I did some additional work here that wasn't required. Big takeaways from this that I want you to note here where I've written things on the board. Please take it back to definitions of terms. These problems are designed to build on each other. They're designed to instruct while you solve them. So good luck. Continue working on these. Continue writing down definitions. Bye.